Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. Welcome back. You're watching Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. Now, one startup that's been ahead of the curve as far as creating a dialogue and actioning change for working women is Sairi Chahil's Shiro's, a career destination for women professionals committed to career success and individual work-life fit. But the team recognized that this is a conversation that must include men and that was the genesis of The Shift, a men's conference. Here's a look at how the conversation around stereotypes, diversity at work and role sharing at home is evolving. Conversations around leadership and work culture need to move out of the realm of women conferences and become more gender neutral. This sentiment was at the crux of The Shift where Shiro's founder Sairi Chahel engaged Microsoft India President Anant Maheshwari in a conversation around diversity in senior leadership. She asked what's a myth and how can things be fixed. And I started that task for myself as to how for this 4,000 person organization I had to set the agenda. And I called a leadership team meeting and I was about to start talking about that and I looked at the table around me and they were all men. I told myself, what right do I have to start talking about gender diversity and leadership when I personally am not an example of that? So to me, that was the tipping point. And I said, I'm going to wait for a while till I at least uh, find the, the right kind of enablement around my own leadership team. And then I can ask everybody else uh, in the team to follow. So it's a long journey since then. Uh, very interestingly, I was coming to this, uh, this conference today uh, and, uh, and I said, okay, this is a conference where I, I can't just talk about these things. Uh, and I started counting the number of people that I have on my leadership team. So there are 11 people on my leadership team and five are women. Well so, well so I think it's been a journey uh, that's got me here. A lot of gender diversity stops at where where it gets easier, right? Functional roles, marketing, PR, HR, you know, give us a sense of what is the construct of core engineering and product teams within Microsoft today? And what's the aspiration? It's, it's empirically researched, uh, and there is enough evidence to that, that whenever you have diverse communities, you have the best innovation. There's a straight linkage between the two. Now take that point into the tech industry. The tech industry thrives on innovation. The, 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 the rationale for the industry is innovation. And therefore you turn it backwards uh, and say, do you have the diversity around you to drive that innovation? If you don't have diversity, it's very likely you will not get the order of innovation that you really want. How are the men feeling, you know, because some of us are getting a little shrill and loud and unstoppable out there about these issues, you know, and not just as a business leader, you know, leave your Microsoft hat aside for a second, you know, talk about men, men in general, you know, business leaders in general, you know, how are the guys feeling? What's what's happening? It's also about how you drive the agenda for diversity. Is it another form of a reservation quota? If you do it that way, then you're doing the wrong thing. I've at least uh, had this very strong notion that whenever we are opening up any position, both in my current organization and in the previous organization, we would definitely have the right mix in terms of candidates. That's where you try to ensure diversity. You make sure that there are enough women candidates. After that, only merit should rule. The shift is also about creating space for honest experience sharing. We caught up with three working couples to find out how they balance life and the expectations one has of it. When I, when I met him, as an aside, and I visited his house for the first time and he was living as a bachelor, he had the most perfectly color coordinated CD collection, his house was spick and span and he made me a meal and I thought I could marry this man because I don't have to do any of this stuff. The stereotype that is uh, definitely true is that when things need to be fixed around the house, uh, uh, I generally get the first right of refusal. That's not true is that I'm better at putting a baby to sleep than Anand. It's actually not true. He, he's much better at it. I, I struggle with that. 
And I would add that uh, there is a general gender stereotype around who loves shopping. Uh, and uh, in our case, she has to control me. We pretty much share everything in the house from, you know, making the dabbas for the kids in the morning, to packing their bags, to doing their homework, to uh, fighting about when we will travel and who gets to travel and who doesn't, etc. So, I think to that extent there aren't stereotypes. For example, he bikes and he plays golf on, on the weekends and I've never understood people who say, you know, I let my spouse do something. Firstly, how do you let someone? How do you, since when do you own someone? Parenting norms are also changing. I would say parenting is not just what Anant and I do. There are grandparents involved. There's a, a lot of stuff involved. So I think we, as we go along and just sort of easing the pressures on our own selves, it becomes easier. It With the men, there is a lot of latitude given, which is saying, Chalega, wo kamata hai to, he won't be a good father. Or he won't be a good husband. When I was growing up, it was expected to be the woman's role. And I think I grew up believing it was the woman's role. It's only very recently that I myself have let go of that notion. Saying it is not a woman's role. And when my kids feel proud that mum is an equally accomplished entrepreneur, I feel happy. More, more accomplished. <laughs> and when they say that dad is, you know, a more accomplished cook, <laughs> then, you know, I feel happy. Promote and support meritocracy. Uh, that can change a lot of things and I don't use those words very carefully. Uh, promote because I don't know of a single woman leader that I've worked with who would feel happy or comfortable if anybody even inferred that she got to that position easier because she was a woman. And then it's support. If you do have a great woman leader around, you need to provide all the support that you can to ensure that the woman leader doesn't get away from that profession for all the reasons which are non-professional. Talking about daycares and infrastructure, I mean, it's not that that's what women employees necessarily want. What they want is flexibility. It's, it's fine if I have to drop my child to a daycare which is not in the office. That's also okay. So it's just flexibility. It's not like we are asking for SOPs and things and these are... Sh I think a daycare or just something like that should be as much as important as your cafeteria or your coffee machine now. I think the, the crescendo of this, this pressure is yet to build up to the max, right? And once that happens, I think that's where the managing the next 7 to 10 years in our society is very crucial. So in the next few years will be crucial to shape the work culture at home and within corporations as more women hopefully join the workforce and move up the ladder. Before we wrap, Young Turks turn 16 this year and we're celebrating that milestone with the annual Young Turks Conclave on the 12th of July. So block your calendars, log on to our Facebook page and our Twitter account for updates. It is time for us to say goodbye to you on this episode from all of us here. Goodbye and many thanks for watching. Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. 